buenos dias, welcome. This is this lesson is Pasos Tres, section D, uh, section four, and it's Direcciones. So really good practical Spanish. You know that learning lenguaje is about vocabulario. You need it in en contexto. Uh, una lista de vocabulario no es suficiente. Necesitas escuchar cómo usar el vocabulario en contexto. But we're going to start, comenzar con el vocabulario today. So we are on página 41. And for directions, you need left and right. Left is izquierda. It's a beautiful old word. It comes from the Basque, the Basque language, which is uh, the region of España, en el noreste de España, con la frontera con Francia. And uh, this is a, one of the most ancient lenguajes de Europa. It's not Latin. So, izquierda, izquierda, such a funny, strange out there word, izquierda. Make sure you know how to say it. Izquierda. Okay? Izquierda. Izquierda. Right. And then right <laughs> is derecha. Derecha, um, you can hear recht, 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 right, derecha. Okay? Derecha. Izquierda, derecha. Izquierda, derecha. You can Imaginar que los soldados eh, que hablan español <laughs> have got a harder time saying left, right, left, right, izquierda, derecha, izquierda, derecha. <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> they must have another sy sistema. Bien. Okay, and then of course you could go straight on, which is todo recto, all straight, todo recto, recto is straight, okay? Todo recto, straight on. Uh, right, we've got three words now. Izquierda, derecha, todo recto. Another three. We're going to have first, second and third. You can see them written with, with like one and then the little O or one and then the little A. We have first, one and then the little ST. Bueno. Uh, because these words agree with the noun, it could be primero or primera. So that's why the O or the A. Segundo or segunda. And then third, tercero, tercera. That might be the most difficult one to say. Escucha. Tercero, tercera. Now, the word for street, this is our last piece of vocabulario in esta pequeña parte del clase. The word for street is calle. You might already know that. You might know that there's a band, un grupo uh, catalán, uh, que se llama Estopa. And their fantastic album, La Calle Es Tuya, is something that I would recomendar. Okay? La calle es tuya. Uh, so calle is feminine. So you're going to have la primera calle a la izquierda. La segunda calle a la izquierda. La tercera calle a la izquierda. You're going to hear a native Spanish speaker saying these words. Actividad 13. Página 41. Pista track 45. Pause this video and listen to that ahora. Bien. Y para completar esa actividad, what I want you to do, lo que quiero que hagas, es copiar that little diagram, that little mapa, if you like, at the bottom of Página 41. And then shut your book, cierra el libro, and try to recordar el vocabulario, writing it on el mapa. Okay, if you can do it, great. 
if you get it completamente correcto. If not, estudia el vocabulario durante dos minutos and then try again. Give yourself up to three chances and hopefully your score will at least improve but you can get up to siete palabras. Okay, so pause this video and do that ahora. How did you do? Did you remember all seven of the words when you copied and labelled the diagram? I'm assuming that you did that. Well, now we're going to usar el lenguaje. Turn over to página 42 and there at the top you'll see another map, another diagrammatic map. What I want you to do, you, it says at the top, estás en el hotel. Entiendes, you're in the hotel. On the map itself it says, estás aquí. And you know that, you know what estás aquí means, right? Aquí is here. Estás aquí. Bien. Uh, you'll notice as well, al lado derecho de la página, there are four places named. You've got um, el catedral, la estación, el museo y hmm, el restaurante. Okay. <laughs> Those are really strong cognate words, but when you go to a Spanish-speaking country, sometimes people think that it's a, that it's nice to correct your grammar. So if you get your gender wrong, they might interrupt you and say, "Oh no, no, no! It's not el; it's la," and that can undermine your confianza, and it can also disrupt the flow of la conversación. So what I'd like you to do is try to memoriza the gender of the words. Remember that it's el restaurante, la estación, la catedral y el museo. Bien. Now before you listen, it's a listening exercise. Antes de escuchar, I'd like you to imagine giving directions to each one of the four little blank squares on that map. So it could be la primera a la izquierda or la primera a la derecha or la segunda a la izquierda, whatever it is. Al final de la calle, todo recto. How would you give directions to those four little blank squares? And if you can do that, if you can preparar las direcciones, then you'll be well prepared for the listening activity that's going to come next. So pause the video and y prepara direcciones to each one of those four little squares. <laughs> Bien. Now you're ready to listen. Estás preparado para escuchar. Y es pista 46. You're going to listen and just like when you go to a Spanish speaking country, there is mucho español que no vas a entender. You're not going to understand. Just listen out. Listen real, really hard for is it primera a la izquierda or primera a la derecha? Is it el museo or is it la catedral? And that way you'll be able to, to identify where, la es, where is, donde esta la estación, okay? Donde esta la catedral. So pause the video so that you can now identify where those places are. Okay, muy bien. It was difficult, I think, difficult listening, because you're not prepared for todo el vocabulario que has escuchado. Bueno, let's get round to that now. So, there were a couple of ways that they had of asking for the directions, donde está el museo, 
but they also did this they said uh, puedes or puede I think puedes puedes decirme donde esta now that puedes means can you it's the two form puedes can you decirme tell me donde esta la estación so this extra little bit of language no es necesario donde esta la estación es suficiente pero puedes decirme donde esta la estación is a bit more polite isn't it so you might like to learn that then we had um, the, the giving of directions. They didn't just say first right, end of the street. They said, take the first right, follow the street. Okay, and we've got a few different ways of doing that. So with the verb tomar, which is to take, tu tomas, that's you take, tu tomas la primera calle a la derecha, or usted toma, Okay, so just drop the S for usted. You'll also hear uh, toma uh, when it's a two form. This is an imperative command. Okay, so it could be toma or tomas or, <laughs> or it could be tome, T-O-M-E, tome. That's the usted command form. You don't need to learn all of this. Just as long as you're in the right ballpark and you know that toma or tomas or tome means take <laughs> okay then you can use it when you're giving directions as well okay seguir next verb is to follow okay so tu sigues or usted sigue sigue la calle or sigues la calle if we're moving on to imperative you might hear sigue or siga siga la calle okay again don't need to learn them. We're not going to uh, studia the imperative today. We really haven't got the present tense mastered yet and I don't want to go on to the imperative. Um, but if you know that you're in the right ballpark and you know that siga, sigue, sigues means follow, then you can choose the one that you want to use and use that. Uh, y finalmente we've got continua which is um, Continuar is to continue, so to continue straight on. Uh, continuas, tu continuas, usted continua. Or if you're using the imperative, the command form, continue. Continue todo recto. Okay, what I recommend you do now is escuchar los diálogos otra vez. But this time, use your support transcripts they are online if you if you didn't get them and you downloaded the uh, online audio instead so have a listen while you are um, reading the transcripts in my audio transcripts it's on Pagina Nueve del Transcript so pause the video and listen and read at the same time and see how much more que puedes entender You'll have noticed if you read the transcript and listened to that pista that some of the people were asking for directions with oye. They were asking for someone's attention with oye, which means listen. It comes from oír, which means to hear. And in English, we would say listen. In, in, in español, oye or oiga. I don't like it. I prefer to say perdón. The reason I don't like it is to my ears, it sounds rude. It's up to you whether you decide to use it or not. We're going to Actividad Quince now, which is putting this Espanol into practice. We're going to use the words toma, take, continua, continuo, continue, y sigue. Uh, I'm go I've chosen to use the usted form of the present simple tense. So, um, las instrucciones say you're going to work with un amigo. I think this, is, this actividad is actually más fácil if you're working on your own independently. So let's have a look at how to do that. It says, tenéis el mismo plano. Tenéis, you have, the vosotros form. 
el mismo plano, the same plan, street plan. Mismo means same. Think of the word mimic. So that's, that's a nice way to remember that. Mismo, the same. If you mimic someone, you try to be the same, right? And then it says, uh, donde están las siguientes calles? Donde están, where are they? And siguientes, the following streets. Okay, this seguir is to follow, y siguientes is in that word family, isn't it? So we're building a bigger picture. Right, and then you've got uno, dos, tres, cuatro, that you're going to ask for. And then on the other page, you've got cinco, seis, siete, ocho. I suggest un dialogo un poco así, something like this. So, estás en el Hotel Oriente. I suggest put yourself on the letter V of the word Cervantes. And then it says, donde está la Plaza Mayor. For example, you might want to start with Puedes, Puede decirme donde está la Plaza Mayor. I'm going to stick with the Usted forms. So the Usted form of take is Toma. Uh, the Usted form of continue is Continua. And follow is Sigue. Toma esta calle. Uno, dos, tres. La tercera. Toma la tercera a la izquierda. Se llama. You can say it's called. Se llama. La calle se llama Coso, por ejemplo. Y la plaza mayor está al final de la calle. You might also like to add. No está lejos. It's not far. Okay. So you're going to do something like that dialogo uh, for each one of those eight places. All right, pause this video and enjoy talking to yourself. If you look in the caja que se llama Atención, at the bottom of Página 43, you'll see that there are formal and informal ways of saying, oh, carry on and take. Those are the command forms. As I said, let's not worry too much about those for now. Actividad 16, at the top of the page, we're going to continuar to use izquierda, derecha, todo recto, hasta el final and we're also going to use uh, the verbs now la idea con actividad 16 es una invitación a la casa de un amigo so it's una fiesta o una cena es informal we're going to use the two forms of the verb and i'd like to swap a and B around. So, first of all, I'd like you to start at la estación and try to imagine and try to s formulate how to give direcciones to each one of the, the three little dots that que representa una casa. And I'd like you to use these words. We've got sales. Now, sales comes from the verb salir it means you go out or you leave. Sales la de la estación. You go out of the station. Sales de la estación. Okay, and then you can say Tomas la primera a la izquierda or la primera a la derecha, whichever. Uh, you can say sigues. Sigues la calle hasta el final. Or you can use continuas, continuas hasta el final de la calle. Y mi casa está a la derecha. Okay, so the first thing that I'd like you to do 
is to prepara direcciones de la estación hasta each one of those three dots que representa una casa. Pause the video to do that ahora. Next, I'd like you to do the first part of Actividad 16, which is to listen to Pista 47. Now, before you do, I want to give you a couple of words. We've got entonces. That's one of my favorite words in, in Espanol. I use it a lot. You must have heard me using it. It's got a couple of meanings. So, entonces means so, and entonces also means then. So it's a sequencer or a, a giver of reason. Entonces, make it your new favorite. The, the second word I'd like to share with you is después. Lovely sound to it. Después. And that means after that. Después. So if you, if you hear those words, um, you know what they mean. Maybe you could incorporate them into your vocabulario. We'll use them in the next activity. Uh, but for now, pause the video to listen to Direcciones de la Estación a Mi Casa and decide which one of those three dots is Mi Casa. If you need to listen to it twice, um, you can use the transcripts <laughs> I'm looking around for it. No importa. Use the transcript if you need to, but do that the second time. Okay, pause the video to escuchar Pista 47. You might have found that when you preparaste direcciones a la casa, it was un poco diferente a las direcciones que escuchaste. No importa, there are different ways to get there. ¿Correcto? Bien. Actividad 17. La idea es, haz, do, <laughs> haz un plano, o make, make, make a plan. Haz un plano de tu casa y cómo ir a tu casa. This word ir sounds like ir, it means to go. Cómo ir a tu casa desde, which means from, desde una parada de autobús. Now, para means to stop. So, una parada de autobús is a bus stop. Again, I ask you to try to if not memorizar, at least try to notice that it's una parada de autobús, una estación, o un metro. So you're noticing the gender of these nouns and then you're more likely to get it right. It does take years <laughs> and I'm not there yet. Bueno, no importa. We try and we make progress. Uh, paso a paso. Uh, so, from desde la parada a tu casa. Uh, try to use the words entonces y después. And you might need un poco más de vocabulario. You might not feel that you have enough. Por ejemplo, desde la parada de autobús a mi casa. Cruzas. Cru cruzar, cruzas la calle. You cross the street. Cruzas la calle. Y vas. That means you go. From this verb ir, which is very irregular. Vas hacia, which means towards, hacia la derecha. Bien. So you're not turning off, but you just, from desde la parada, vas hacia la derecha y sigues la calle y continúas en la calle principal. So you don't turn off. Y mi casa es el número tres. Okay, 
So if you have any problems doing that, uh, let me know, put it in the comments, um, see if I can help you or uh, if not, if you're an independent learner, maybe you can find help online. Uh, but you are welcome to, to, to comment, to write to me, ruth at spanglishfantastico.com. Okay, make your plan, create your directions and try to uh, say them from memory, de memoria. Pause the video and do that actividad ahora. I hope you managed to do some directions to your house at tu casa. If you live somewhere really rural where you have to drive, maybe you could think of your local pueblo or la ciudad where you go shopping and uh, give directions from la estación a una tienda or public toilets, servicios públicos, something like that. OK, so don't let living somewhere remote stop you from com completing el ejercicio. Now, we're at el final de sección, sección 3D. So we're on to the SMART goals. And some of the things that I think have been really great in this lesson, in this section, are some of the sentences like Puedes decirme dónde está? So um, I'm going to put those on my SMART goals as well as some verbs. I'm going to use the present simple of the verbs. That's my choice. If you want the imperatives, they're in your PASOS textbook. OK, so that's your choice, how you want to learn them. And of course, left and right, izquierda y derecha. I'm also going to include my very favourite word, entonces, and of course, después. All right. I hope you managed to use some of those in, your, in the directions to your, your house, to casa. Come back once you've learned your SMART goals, uh, because next lesson, I believe we're going to have a look at saying where things are next to and behind, really fun language to work with. Uh, I look forward to presenting la clase. Thank you, muchísimas gracias for being with me for Pasos 3, uh, 3D um, and, uh, and for choosing me as your profesora. Hasta la próxima. Adiós.